let's lock down those permissions. In this video, we're going to be talking about RBAC, or more specifically, roles and role bindings. I'm not going to be covering cluster roles or cluster role bindings in this video purely because of the fact they're essentially one in the same, except cluster roles and cluster role bindings are non-namespace resources. So you can pretty much do the same stuff, but with a cluster role, you can give more permissions across more of the cluster. So for example, you can have something apply across all namespaces. Imagine you have a user that needs access to all pods across all namespaces in some capacity. Then rather than creating a role in every namespace, you could create a cluster role and then create a role binding in each namespace that links to the cluster role and gives them that access. That'll make more sense in a minute when we actually get into things. We're also gonna cover on how to create a user and how groups work, as well as service accounts in pods, because sometimes pods need access to the cluster. Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. So let's get into it. We'll start off by just taking a look at roles and role bindings as a quick view, and then we'll actually go ahead and create some stuff. So what I'm gonna do first is just kubectl explain role, and we'll have a look at this. So pretty standard stuff, API version kind of metadata, but then we've got this rule section. So let's take a look at dot rules. And in here, we've got a few extra bits. The important bits to us though are API groups, resources, and verbs. You will see these other two from time to time, but I'm not gonna get into those two right now. Basically on a, on a really kind of short example of them, You've got, well, I mean, you can read these yourself, but basically you can, you can hit API, for example, forward slash API on a non-resource URL. So it's a URL that you're hitting instead. And then resource names, it's just an optional list of names that the rule applies to. For example, if you had a pod called test, you'd just write test. So it's just it's just a whitelist, basically, that's all. But we're going to touch on resources, verbs, and API groups. Now, we're just going to use the imperative way of doing things rather than the declarative way of doing things. And then we'll have a look at the YAMLs once we're finished. So to do that, we need kubectl create role hyphen hyphen help and let's take a look so in here we've got a few examples at the top again you can have a look through these to see what else you can do but in a nutshell we've got this so we can say create a role give it a name the verbs we want or we can just do the verb as a list like this just as an array and then we can say that the resources are pods or replica set dot at so you can specify the actual api group straight afterwards with dot api group and if you don't specify one it will just default to v1 so the core api things where you know your, your pods your secrets config maps things like that that are within it otherwise you need to actually specify it you can also do star like wildcards and that will apply to all api versions and it's the same for resources and verbs there as well but i would not recommend doing that so let's take a look at a role or a cluster role for that matter. So there are roles and role bindings, which are namespace resources, and there are cluster roles and cluster role bindings, which as I said in the little intro bit, are cluster-wide resources. I'm just gonna take a look at the admin role. So we'll do kubectl, get cluster role, and we'll have a look in here. We've got a bunch of different ones. Oh wait, no, it doesn't, it doesn't actually show it in here, does it? That's correct, it doesn't actually show it in here. So we'll just take a look at the view role and we'll do get cluster role view and we'll output that as YAML. So in here, it's got a bunch of different stuff. I mean, it's an absolutely massive thing, but what it's actually doing is it's specifying a load of resources. It's not used star across the board. It's defined a load of resources and just given them get list watch, get list watch, see? So we can see here, we've got API group of cert manager and we're allowed to get list and watch these resources. and then. We We've got the same for this one. We've got a no API group here. So this is just the V1 stuff, which is config maps, endpoints, system volume claims. You can see them all here, get this watch. And then we've got this apps API group here. We've got a auto scaling. You notice these haven't got the V1s next to them. It's just apps. It's just auto scaling. It's just batch. It's just extension. So it's the API group, not the version itself. And what I mean by that is if I just scroll back up to that explain all the way up here, you've got this group here. Don't need to worry about this bit here. It's just the group, okay? So that's an example of the view one. It's just get list watch across the board we're allowed to look at stuff but we're not allowed to do anything in terms of creating updating deleting so that's how you write it out in the yaml i'll have a look at the cluster role bindings now just to see what's out there and i'm pretty sure there's not one called view there is not so we'll just grab one just any of them system basic user will do and we'll output that as yaml and you can see what this one does is again pretty standard metadata stuff and then it's got a role reference which specifies an api group which is generally the rbac stuff because that's what you're going to reference as a role whether it's a cluster role or a role there is a name which is the name of the actual cluster role in this case and then there's the subject which is a group and that group is anyone who is an authenticated person so a system authenticated and what does that mean well if i do kubectl and then auth 
who am I? You can see here, we're part of System Masters, but we're also part of System Authenticated. And that's it. Anyone who is authenticated is part of System Authenticated. Now, groups and users generally come under the OIDC kind of umbrella. So if you have an OIDC provider for your cluster, which we will go through setting up at some point, but it's not for now, it's kind of more advanced stuff later down the line, then you would get that group and user from there and you'd be able to specify that as part of the RBAC or the role binding. You can also do service accounts and just users and groups that we manually create, which we're going to do in a second. Although generally speaking, it's not recommended to manually create users and groups, but it's not technically wrong either. You can do it. Let's get into actually creating some stuff. We're going to jump over to the control plane node first. So I'm going to do SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.0.201. We could do all of this on our local node, by the way, and we probably should actually. I'm going to do it on our local node, but I need to get some bits from the control plane node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the ETC Kubernetes PKI and then the CA and the CA cert, which to be fair, I'm just going to make it abundantly clear right now. Do not move your CA keys around. It's a bad idea. You should probably do this on your control plane node. In fact, you know what? Let's do it on the control plane nodes. It's fine. So we're not going to copy them. We're just going to make a note of the path. So CA star, we'll just LS that and then we'll CD, we'll make a directory PKI CD into that. We'll make all of our stuff on here and move it over to our PCs so that we can use them. Let's get started. We need something first called CFSSL. We could do all of this with open SSL, but I honestly prefer CFSSL. I find it easier to use. It seems more logical to use and it just works really nice with Kubernetes as well. I'm also going to cheat a little bit and use some information from my Medium article, which is not a plug, just a FYI, which I'm going to link it down below so you can copy and paste these bits too, because remembering this stuff off the top of your head, unless you're doing it every day, it's pretty hard. You know, it's been a while since I wrote that article. I think I wrote it back in like 2019 so yeah it's, it's been a while since i've done it this way but let's do it anyway so i'm gonna do at install golang hyphen cf ssl we'll install that and now we'll go ahead and take a look at the documentation i was just talking about i say documentation it's just something i've written there's a whole article about kubernetes a hard way here but all i need is the config here this config so i'm going to grab that i'm going to paste that in go back to the start and change this bit here just so it puts it in the current directory and just to walk you through all we're doing is setting up a configuration for the certificate authority and we're setting up a profile that we're going to reference during the sign in of our keys and setting up some expiration dates that's all you need to know about that for now okay so i'm going to smash enter on that and we have that and then the other thing i need is the one that would be for the admin but i'm going to just change this out a little bit so i'll grab that we'll paste that in Again, we'll change this and I'm going to change admin to Drew. And in here, we'll change admin to Drew. Just put that quote back at the start. And I'm going to change the key size to 4096 because it's more secure. And I'm going to have to just change these bits because they're environment variables in my guide. So I'll put GB and then in location, I'll put, I don't know, knots or something like that. Organizational units. We're not going to be system masters because we don't want to be part of that. And if you remember, that's that's what we had up here a second ago. We're not going to be system admins. This is just our group. That is literally all it is. It's nothing more than that. So I'm going to call this group learners. Organizational unit is just whatever you want. I'm just going to call it cluster users. And then the state is your state. I'm just going to put England in. It's not a state, but it is what it is. And yeah, okay. So most of this is completely irrelevant. That's why I have environment variables in place for it because it's just the same across the board uh, for me. I could put hi, my name is if I wanted to. It honestly wouldn't matter. The important part here is actually this organizational bit here. And that is the group that the user will belong to. So I'm going to press enter on that. I'm going to copy Drew over to ada-csr.json and I'll actually correct the name of that because I put, called it CST for some reason. We will have a look at that and just change Drew there to ada and yeah, you're going to stay as part of learners. Okay, we've got all our bits in place that we need to generate some certificates. So let's jump back over and grab that command. And what we need is this here. I'll walk you through as we do it as well. So I'm going to paste that in and we have generate certificate. We need the path to the CA file. So if I actually go back up, I had it already up here. So I'll grab that. So it's CRT and key. So we'll paste that in, change that for CRT. We will paste it in here. And that's just the correct one because that's the key. And we'll change this, just delete that bit. So it's CA config, the one we just created. The profile is Kubernetes, which is in that CA config. And this bit will be Drew. And then the output that I want it to go into is Drew. And you'll see what gets created as part of this. So this will generate some certificates. It passes it in CFS cell JSON and you'll see. So that's fine. 
everything you see there is absolutely fine. It doesn't matter if it lacks a host field, it just means it's unsuitable for websites, but that's fine because we don't need that. So we'll list it out and we'll see now we've got this Drew key, Drew CSR and Drew PEM. Now these two are going to be important later down the line. We're going to go ahead and repeat that command, changing Drew for Ada. So now we have a bunch of certificates and keys for Ada and Drew. Now that we've got all our certificates in place, let's go ahead and generate the CSR for them. So again, I'm just going to jump back over here and jump over to this page. And this is all I need for this. So I'm going to grab these. I'm just going to have to do it one at a time because I don't want the whole thing being pasted in at once. So we will paste that one in first. We're going to change cluster for doesn't matter. It's just a cluster name within the config. So tutorial. What we're doing here, by the way, is generating a new Kubernetes config. So this is the name of the Kubernetes config at the bottom so i'm going to change this bit to drew.cube.config and i need to change this ip here to 192.168.0.200 this is the floating ip we set up with cube vip we need to embed the certificates and the certificate authority is that certificate we used a second ago so i'll just grab that and paste that in and that should be fine so we're going to generate a new kubernetes config and it's going to be called drew.cube.config the cluster is going to be called tutorial and we're going to embed the certificates for this so now we should see that cube config and if we have a look at that now you'll see the makings of what it will become so you can see here we've got this cube config let's go ahead and carry on filling the rest of it in so to do that we're going to have to just grab this in fact let's just have a look see what we've got here so we're going to do set credentials and then we're going to do set contact so this this will just set up the user set of it so we'll grab that and now we'll do this bit here so again we're just going to do drew.cube config so drew and then this bit here will be drew and then here will be drew and again the set credentials admin i'm just going to call it drew because the admin section there is the user so the user's name is drew the certificate i'm going to use is drew.pem the client key is going to be drew hyphen key.pem we're going to embed the certificate scan and then the cube config is that so let's go ahead and just cut that out again. And you can see it's filled all that in. And all we need to do now is actually set the context. So let's go ahead and grab this. We'll paste that in again, set context for Drew. The cluster is tutorial. In fact, we can just leave the context as default. I'm going to create two cube configs, one for Drew, one for Ada. You could put them both in one, but ideally I'd be handing this out to Drew and another one out to Ada. That's pretty much all I'm doing here. So we'll do Drew for the user and then drew.cubeconfig right that is it that cube config is good to go so let's go back up and start doing the next one for adas so set cluster tutorial and we're going to create an ada cube config then we've got the set credentials one so we'll do that it's going to be ada 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 and ada and finally the context one which we'll leave as default again just need to change this for ada and this one for ada and we've got two cube configs so there's one more command I missed here and I shouldn't have done. It's right there in the Medium article. It's just below the ones that I've been copying and pasting and I missed it anyway and I shouldn't have done, but I did. So this command right here, behold my editing skills. This command here is the use context command, kubectl config use context. Now what this basically does is say within this cube config, use this context. And that's basically it. Because I didn't run this command, I'm well, I've not got a context set, which means when I run my kubectl command shortly, it's not going to know what to use as its context. Even though I'm pointing it to a cube config, there's a line in there, which you'll see me change in a moment, that basically says use this one, because you can have multiple in one file. So I didn't set that, which means I'm going to hit a problem and have to manually change it. You can avoid that by running this command, swapping out the context and the cube config as appropriate. Otherwise, you can just do what I did. Now, let's get back to it. I'm going to move ada.cubeconfig and drew.cubeconfig over to home Ubuntu. I'm going to cd into home Ubuntu. We can do shown Ubuntu ada and drew. And then I'm going to exit out of the thing altogether. We're going to do scp and we're going to copy across ada.cubeconfig to dot cube slash tutorial hyphen ada and put my password in and then we'll do the same for drew 
and we are good to go. Now you can see here why we use OIDC instead of creating users on the fly, because that whilst fairly easy once you've done it a few times and absolutely automatable, it's quite a few steps to do to generate a Kubernetes configuration for a single user. But I want to show you how to do that because it's useful to know how to do that. You know, you might just be setting up a little cluster of your own at home and you want to give one of your friends access to it. This is how you can do it without having to set up OIDC. So there is kind of trade-offs and pros and cons and all that lot, but it's just something worth bearing in mind. Now we are ready to actually start playing with those users but before we do let's test them to make sure they work or actually more correctly don't work do you know what? actually just before i do i'm quickly just going to make sure they're fine because i didn't actually check anything i just blindly copied there and i shouldn't have done so let me just check so that should be fine we've got a server there okay so let me go ahead and do export cube config equals dot cube slash tutorial hyphen drew so i should be able to do cube ctl get pod namespace learning and it should fail why is that looking at local host 8080 is the did the config not get set let me just check that over okay for some reason it didn't set the context when i did the set, set context command that's not a problem let me just check ada while i'm at it because that's probably the same yeah i must have copied and pasted it wrong i must have not set something correctly but that's fine don't worry about it that guide does work i promise you it's been used by many people so you can see what's happening there though user drew cannot list the resource pods in api group in the namespace learning so i'm not allowed to do anything here so let's make it so i can so I'm going to have to just re-export back to tutorial so that I can list things in that namespace. I've got admin access now. Who am I? There you go. Kubernetes admin, system masters. Cool. We're good. So let's do kubectl, namespace learning, create, and we're going to do a, just a role. We're not going to do any cluster roles or role bindings in this video, by the way, but the rules are the same. It's just remember they are cluster level and you can bind a cluster role to a role binding. So you can have a cluster role that defines a load of permissions. You can bind it to a role binding in namespace. There are only limited scenarios where you'd want to do that, but they do exist and you can do that. But again, whatever I'm showing you here, you can extrapolate to a cluster wide setup with cluster roles and cluster role binding. And again, any questions far away in the comments, by the way. But for now, we're just going to stick with roles in namespaces because realistically, that's the more common usage. Not always, but it is. If you're dealing with users, you might want to lock them down to a particular namespace and this is how you can do it. I digress. Create role. Pod reader. I'm going to give it the verb of, we'll do get, and we won't do list or watch yet because I just want to show you how this will change. Do resource equals pod. And let me just check that over. So it's actually pods. It's the plural. So we're going to do create a role in the namespace learning called pod reader and we're allowed to get pods. Cool. So let's smash enter on that and that's been created. So now we need to create the role binding. So we'll do kubectl, namespace learning, and then we're going to create a role binding and that is going to have a role equal to pod reader. Also, I just need to quickly give this a name. So I'll do pod reader binding to be very creative. So yeah, the role is pod reader. So that is the role we've just created here. Now we also need a subject for this. So a subject is a user, a group, or a service account. So we're going to start with a user and that user is going to be able to, in fact, we'll, we'll start with a group. Let's start with a group. So we'll do a group, which is equal to learners. Now remember that organizational value. This is, this is where it's going to come in handy. So we'll say that everyone in the learners group can read pods. That's what should be able to happen here. So let me go ahead and press enter on that and we'll just check them over as well. So we'll do kubectl get role and role binding in the namespace learning. Let's just get rid of that equals and let's have a look what we've got. So I'm just going to output both of them as YAML actually. Let's have a look. Okay. So what we're saying is we've got a role here, API groups of nothing. So v1 pods and we can get. So we can't list we can't watch. So we should see that we can't actually do kubectl get pods, but we should be able to do kubectl get pod something. So before I do, let's just grab a pod so we know what we're dealing with. Now let's export over to Drew and I'll do kubectl. In fact, I'll just run that same command. So user Drew cannot list resources pods, but I should be able to get one of them. So if I just grab that and change this for a particular pod, we can see we can get it. So that's good. That's, that's great. Can we describe it? we can. So describe isn't a verb in the same way, but this is where security comes in because if I can describe it, I can also see maybe what secret is being used. For example, maybe there's a secret mounted in this pod and I can say, oh, right, cool. Well, I can see here that this has a particular config or something like that. And then I can start moving around to see if I can grab a secret or something like that. This is part of the Kubernetes security specialist is done, by the way, you'll be asked to potentially find out how to get secrets from pods. And this is one of the ways that they will do it. They'll lock you down so much in a namespace, but there'll be little things like, oh yeah, but it's a mounting a secret or it's an environment variable in there or something like that. But on that note, can I get secrets from any namespace at all? 
No, the answer is no. So what I can actually do to see what I am allowed to do is kubectl off can I get pods? No. So I can't get pods. Well, can I get its secrets? No. What about in the what about in the learning namespace? Yes, I can get pods, but I can't get pods. I can get a pod. That's kind of the point here. Okay, so can I watch pods? No. Can I list pods? No. Can I describe pods? You see, describe is not a known verb. So this, I just want to show you that so you can see that. So you can see here now how that works. We can see who I am with who, auth who am I. And I can also see what I can do in a particular namespace or any other namespace for that matter. So that's cool. Let's just check to make sure that Ada's in the same boat. So I'll do get pod and I need that particular one. Yep, okay, that's fine. And we can see there that I can't list the pods. So that's, that's as expected. So let's take it a little bit further. We're now going to go ahead and say create a new role called uh, uh, allow more <laughs> just for the sake of it okay so kubectl in the namespace learning create role allow more and the verb is get list watch and we're gonna do it for resource pods and secrets and services and config maps and uh anything else i can think of uh, ingresses let's do ingress as well so it'll be ingress dot networking.k8s.io let's see if it works no i didn't think it would okay <laughs> so oh of course i'm still later <laughs> okay let's go back to one that actually works and try that again oh it did allow me to do that for the sake of it let's just read it and make sure we are getting what we expect yeah so you can see here it's got the api groups of networking.ks.io it's got ingressors as the resource and then get this watch for both of those so who do i want to bind this to so we'll do create role binding get that previous command up and this time we're going to do the role allow more to instead of a group the user equals ada so now we are going to do oh we just need to change the name of that actually allow more binding and we'll do that right let's export drew again qctl get pod service uh what else did i do config map secret ingress all in the namespace learning no you're not allowed that's it Go away. All right, okay, so what about what about Ada? Can, can she do it? Hey, look at that. There you go. So she can get everything. Brilliant. I haven't got half of those resources, but you can see already that I can get config maps, I can get services, I can get pods. That's great. And now I can list them as well. That's the other point here. And I can even do like uh, get pod namespace learning hyphen W, and I can watch those pods. That's another command there. That hyphen W is a watch. That's what it is. So there we go. So we're kind of on something here now. We've got some permissions starting to be set. You know, we're really locking down that learning namespace now as well. So that's a good start. And to be honest, that's kind of all I want to show you for users and groups. You can see how we can lock things down there. The other thing I want to show you real quick, though, is how we can allow pods to be able to do things. What do I mean by that? Let me quickly show you. So kubectl run test image equals Ubuntu. And we'll put that onto 2204. We'll give it a command of sleep infinity and that will be in the space learning so i'm back on the admin user now by the way it's because i've got not, not got any create permissions on drew or ada so i'm back on the admin user and again just check if you want there it is so let's get the pods in the namespace learning i should have one called test so we'll do kubectl execute it namespace learning test and we're going to execute bash now sometimes your pods may need to communicate with the Kubernetes API. You don't want to be dumping kube configs in your pods because that's you, well, it's a pain and asking for trouble. It's both of those things because it means you've got to store that kube config somewhere and pass it into the pod. What happens when you create a pod is you get service account tokens mounted into it. It's something that can be done optionally, but by default it will happen. And what I mean by that is if I grab the pod test in the namespace learning and take a look, you can see that we've got this service account here. Okay, so this is a token that's being mounted into the pod. And in fact, we can just go ahead and cat that out. So if I cat that, you can see here, I've got a CA certificate, a namespace and a token. So let's cut the token out and you can see I've got this token. So what is this token? Should we just see what we can do with it? I mean, it's, it's going to be a jot token. You can see these dots in here. So that's what it will be. So I can do echo that token. Oh, I didn't actually uh, copy it properly. So in fact, you know, let's just cut it out. We'll pass it into basics for the code. And we'll get a little bit of funky output here, but you can see here what's going on. So we've got this bit here. In fact, I can do something better here. So let me just do this a little bit different. So I'm going to pipe that into JQ and we will read that with, I'm trying to remember the command off the top of my head here, sorry. Uh, we'll do G sub. And then in here we'll do, oh, can I remember this command? It's 
it's a it's a long one it shouldn't be this hard to do something like this but unfortunately it is this hard to do something like this so i'm just gonna do a little bit of jq trickery and let me just read that so and then i need to split it on the on the dot and then i want to pipe that again and we're going to take the first field and then pipe that into app base 64 decode and then from JSON, close the quote, and that should work. I don't have JQ installed, brilliant. Okay, so apt install, JQ, yes. Oh, apt update, did not do that already. Oh yeah, I've still got my network policies installed. Let's quickly remove those. So I'll do kubectl, delete, hyphen f, workloads, main, network policies. We'll just delete that, because otherwise it's, it's gonna get in the way for this next section, because I need to install a couple of packages. I forgot I still had them installed, but we should keep them. We should actually modify the network policy to enable me to do this, but it's a test, so it doesn't matter. So we'll do install JQ, and do you know what? While I'm at it, I'm gonna need curl in a minute as well, so we'll do curl as well. All right, let's run that JQ command again. We should see, here we go. So this is the token. You can see we've got a name of the pod, Got a namespace and then i've even got a little bit about my service account here so if i go ahead and do zero we'll see the first bit if i go ahead and do two we'll see the last bit we can't actually get that bit because it's encrypted but there is like multiple parts to a, a jot and a jwt if you're not sure what that is and this basically allows us to communicate with the kubernetes api from within inside the pod so how do we do that well let's go ahead and install kubectl in this pod and find out so i'll jump over here i have handily got this already drop that in there do chmod plus x kubectl and then we'll move kubectl to use a local bin and now we should just be able to do kubectl yeah okay get pod namespace learning and you can see here pods is forbidden user system service count learning default remember if we just look back at that chart system service count learning default that's my name in this pod cannot list resources pods in api group in the namespace learning well we recognize this error that's what we saw for drew and ada before we gave them permission so we can just go and create a role binding for them a role and a role binding in fact we don't even need a role we can just do a role binding in fact we don't even need to do that let's do one a little bit different so we do kubectl get role binding in the namespace learning we have this pod reader binding already that binds to the pod reader. And that's all I want to do. I just want to be able to get the pods. So let's do that. I'm going to edit that role binding. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to yank those three lines. We'll put them in. We'll change this one for service accounts. That should be learning default. And that is because that's our username. Our, our service account name is default. It just mounts this default service account. Now I could restrict it to a singular pod by creating a service account that only that pod can mount or that that pod will mount, I should say, in the learning namespace. And that might be called learning colon whatever. And then I would use that instead. But in this case, I'm just going to use the default one. So we've got learning colon default service count and the API group is just removed. So we'll just get rid of that bit there. And actually, sorry, that shouldn't be like that either. It's actually namespace. You define the namespace like that. So I can get rid of that. So the name of the service count is default and the namespace is learning. And if you're not sure about the name of the service count, you can do kubectl, get sa for service count in the namespace learning. And you'll see we have a default one. Again, we can just create one if we want to, mount it into the pod, which we can do at the pod level and then define that here if we wanted to, but we're just gonna use that one. So I will write that one out and quit. So we'll go back over here and run that command, which we know won't work because we're not allowed to list resources. But what we are allowed to do if we grab the name of a pod, for example, that is specify a particular pod. Now my pod can communicate with the Kubernetes API to get singular pods. And that allows us to do so much more in our pods. If we have some sort of Go binary, Python, whatever it might be code in, that needs to communicate with the API to do stuff, then this is how you do it. Think Cilium, think cluster autoscaler, think horizontal pod autoscaler. All of those things need to communicate with the API. This is how they do it via service accounts, all back. It's all there, roles and role bindings. And that's where I'm going to leave it. And that's it. That's all I'm going to show you about roles and role bindings or RBAC or role-based access control for that matter. That's what I'm talking about when I say RBAC. But basically, that's it. That's all you need to know. Cluster roles and cluster role bindings, I might touch on at some point and go into a little bit more detail, but they are literally just the same thing, but non-namespace, which means they can be applied cluster-wide, as I said right at the start. And I think a couple of times in the video too. So yeah, that's, that's it. So all we're going to cover for now. Any questions, obviously, ask down below as always. But we're going to move on to the next video, which comes around to security again. So we're going to talk about pod security standards and security context 
and security admission, I think, maybe. I'll try and fit those three into one video. If not, I'll split it into two videos. It might make more sense to have them over two. So we'll see what I can do, see what time I've got, see if it gets too long, things like that. And yeah, I'll see you over there.